Why is the Nissan Qashqai like Christopher Columbus? Well, it's because people think he was the first, like they did with Christopher Columbus. They thought he was the first one to the Americas. He wasn't. People think that this was the first family SUV. He wasn't. Do you know what car it was? First family crossover SUV? If you do, let me know in the comments below. See if you get it right. Anyway, what this could well be though, is the most important new car to be launched in 2021 because it's so popular here in the UK. Now in this video, I'm gonna show you what's good about it, what's not good about it, what's not so good about it. <laughs> See what's not good about this video, it's this blooming useless presenter. I'm going to talk you around the design, the interior, the technology. Take it for a drive, see what it's like. Anyway, I'm Matt Watson and you're watching CarWow. Buying a new car? Then head to CarWow and my team will help you find your next car at a fair price. CarWow, your one-stop car buying comparison site. Let's start off this video by talking about the price. I'm going to go to CarWow to see what it is. Oh, look, there's the price range there. Starts from just under £27,000. Though you can save an average of £3,400 off one if you buy through CarWow. Now, if you want to do that for this or any car, just click on the pop-out banner up there to go to CarWow. We've also got a new service where we can help you sell your car. So even if you're not buying a new car, you can just input the details of the car you want to sell, upload some photos, and you'll get five offers back on your car from trusted dealers. Then you can pick which one you want to go for and they'll give you the money and take your car away or you can just choose not to do that at all it's all free anyway check it out in fact if you want to do it at a later date just simply google help me car wow and my team and i will help you with that or help you choose your ideal new car we can do it all i'm going to talk you through the design of this car now and i'm going to try and do it like a car designer would like really explain the finer details and why we've got all these different shapes and stuff so here goes from the back the cash guy it looks like this. The side, it's like that. There, it's the side. It's the front. It's like that. It's got these mirrors on it. Oh my God, I'm looking old. Yeah, there you go. It's good, eh? Actually, I quite like the look of this car. It's evolved, looks modern, but it's still recognisable as a cash car, don't you think? What do you think of it? Let me know in the comments below. Here on the inside, the new cash car is less recognisable. If it didn't have that Nissan badge there, I probably wouldn't know. The old car was like dull. This one is much more interesting. Look at the design of the dash. There's a lot of things going on. You could say there's a little bit too much, but it feels noticeably more at market than before. Well, that's so long as you have one of the higher specification models like this car is. So I've got like stitched leather on the dash. I mean, how premium is that? Squidgy there, soft there, more stitched leather here. Nice squidgy yielding bits for your elbows. This interesting material here, which I think is supposedly inspired by Japanese craft work wood stuff. Yeah, it's just press release nonsense. But it does all look pretty interesting. Also, Nissan has spent a lot of time finessing the tactile feeling that you get from the button. So, oh, the climate controls have a really nice, solid, damp feeling. The spring back on these buttons when you press them and release them is nice. These click through with a satisfying ding, ding, ding. What am I going on about? Anyway, everything that you press does feel solid, nice, and expensive -y feeling, which is good. What's not so good, though, is the infotainment system. You see, on the entry-level car, you don't actually get one. You just get, like, a radio. <laughs> <laughs> then as you move up, you get a touchscreen with 8 inches. Because this is the most expensive car, you then get this 9-inch screen. And the screen is actually quite nice. A little laggy, maybe, but it's easier to use, and you can quickly whiz through different menus and stuff like that. And you can get Apple CarPlay and Android Auto. And as you move up the range, you actually have wireless Apple CarPlay. And high-spec cars also get a digital driver's display, which is pretty nice, clear, easy to use, and you can go through different functions and stuff like that. So it's quite handy. In terms of the actual seating position, it's good. You sit quite high up, but there is plenty of adjustment in the seat if you want to go a bit lower. And it'll go up quite a way if you need to go higher. When's it going to stop? There we go. Yeah, it's good if you're small. Obviously, there's lots of adjustment in the steering wheel as well. Look at that multitasking as this goes down. Practicality is all right as well. Look, you've got some cup holders there. You've got some space under there with a USB port there and a USB-C so you can choose depending on how old your mobile phone is this car has a wireless charging pad there and you can fit bigger phones like my samsung galaxy s20 ultra that'll fit even in its protective case and of course look we've got some biggish door bins here there's a bottle um wrong brand yeah you fit a big bottle in there no problem at all yeah it's all very nice in here the only thing that's a bit weird is the design of this that just reminds me of a stereo my dad had in the uh late 70s show my age now but can you see that look it looks like an old-fashioned stereo that 
This new Qashqai has 20 millimeters more knee room than the old one. As a result, it does feel more roomy back here. So I've got that seat in front in my driving position. I'm 179 centimeters tall and look how much knee room I've got. Also, despite this car having the panoramic glass roof, which does eat into headspace a bit, I've still got loads of headroom. So people over six foot tall will be fine in the back of this car, without a doubt. And these seats are really comfy as well. It's good. And yeah, there's a bit of a hump in the floor, but it's not too big. And the center seat seems all right. So you are gonna be able to carry three people in the back. Bit of a squeeze, but it's not gonna be awful. If you look down here, you'll see there's two choices yet again of connectivity. You've got an old school USB port there, and then the new USB-C, so you don't need to go with multiple cables. Don't worry about that. Don't worry about having somewhere to store your iPad because they'll fit in these little pockets on the seat backs. There's also a place for your drink there, look. Nice big door bin. Lovely job, below. And look, you can see the quality extends back here in this particular model. Mm, more leathery stitchinginess. Oh, if you've got a baby, it's quite easy to fit a child seat because look at this, the doors, open really wide, almost 90 degrees actually. So you can fit a big bulky seat in here and because there's enough room, you can fit it quite easily without having to move the front passenger seat forward. One slight issue is that though, look. I hate these removable eyes fix covers because you just lose them. Well, I lose them. That's it, that's all you need to know about the back. Ah! The fly's liking it. Yes, yes, Mr. Fly, do you like it? Go on, piss off. Wait, piss off. What you? Oh, he got out of there quick smart. <laughs> Let's move on to the boot. So for the first time, you can now get the Qashqai with an automated tailgate. Tell you what, this car is packed full of premium car features, I can tell you. And then look at this, right? Boot space, 503 litres. So it's 70 litres more than the old Qashqai, which is really impressive. And it's a big, useful square shape. There's no load lip either in this particular model. So you can slide things in and out. Dead easy, like that. look at that. What is this? Some kind of car cover. Anyway, you can also get it with this false floor, which is configurable. And underneath it, you can fit the parcel shelf. I haven't done this for a while. Sorry, Nissan. It's just car wow rules. Yeah, look at this. You can divide this up as you want like that to stop things like sliding around. It's all pretty useful. I'm not sure what I'm doing with that bit, but you get the general idea or you can just remove all of that entirely, actually. And then you have this huge space. And there's some other useful features like things that you can hang stuff off, 12 volt socket, tethering points. And then when you fold down the rear seats, look at this. Oh, you got even more space. Oh, they're spring loaded. Look at that. Oh, I need to show you that it's a continuous flat floor down. Oh, so I've got to go get the, the bits I've just chucked back. Bear with me. Not teach me. All right. Yes, come on, get in. Okay, look at this now. Woohoo! That makes it easy to slide. Yeah, I've got to go get that as well. It makes it easy to just like slide things to the front of the car like that. And they've actually lowered the load height of the car compared to the old cash guy, so it's easier to lift things in and out. All good, all good, unless you need a really, really big boot because with its seats up, the Volkswagen Tiguan has a 615 litre boot, so quite a bit bigger than this one. If you want to see my full in-depth video review of the Volkswagen, just click on the pop-out banner up there to go watch it. And that does bring me on to five annoying things about this Qashqai. Sort of out of breath now with all that running around. I'm not convinced by this gear selector here for the automatic model. It just seems overly and unnecessarily big. They could just had some buttons or something. Stop it, man. I don't know why they haven't put a little tab for the rear armrest. You have to jab your fingers in. There we go, to get it down. And then you've got these cup holders, which are pretty pointless. Look at this, right? I mean, look, <laughs> any kind of sudden acceleration or braking, and that's going to happen. What's going on here, look? Why well, have we got a smallish glove box? It's almost as bad as what you've got on Peugeots and Citroëns. Fuse box is there. Why well, can't I have a full length glove box? Move that fuse box over there with the right hand drive steering wheel. Stop this. Stop it now. Do the cash guys' rear windows go all the way down? No, no, they don't. But you knew that anyway, because this is part of the bad section of the video, isn't it? Why don't they? I, I, I really like to rest my arm out the window when it's warm like today. You can't when it's like that. The entry-level version of this car comes with steel wheels. Steel wheels. In 2021. Are you sure? 
and they're only 17 inches in diameter. These are the new 20 inch wheels, it's the first time you can get 20 inches on the Qashqai. And when you have these big wheels, you also get sophisticated multi-link independent rear suspension. Don't worry, there's still plenty to like about this car. Here's the Colwell 5 core features. Nissan has used lots of lightweight materials when building this car. So the doors, the wings and the bonnet are made out of aluminium. This bonnet, right, I can lift it with one finger. Right. If I was doing that with the old Qashqai's steel bonnet, I'd have broken my finger. Then, there's a tailgate which is made out of composite material, which means it's so light I can lift it with my little finger. Oh yeah, I did show you that this was an electric tailgate earlier. Anyway, it's still dead light. And the use of all these lightweight materials means that Nissan have managed to shave 60 kilos from what this car's weight would have been if they'd just built it out of normal steel and stuff. You can get this car with all the latest tech. So safety systems that can see all the way around the car. You've also got adaptive cruise control to keep you safe distance from the car in front, auto steer to keep you in lane. You've got surround view cameras like that. Look, that's my arse there. Look, it's been picked up by the camera on the door mirror. And you've got connected services, so it'll tell you things like fuel prices and the nearest petrol stations and stuff. And you've even got Amazon Alexa connectivity, so you can tell your home device where you'd like to go and it beam it into the car sat nav so you're not having to set it up before you leave. So you can save a bit of time. Likewise, you can do it in reverse and control certain things in your house via Amazon Alexa here in the car. Brilliant. The quilt leather you can get in this car apparently takes 25 days to produce. It even takes a robot 60 minutes to embroider all this diamond stitching. You can even get the seats with this, look. A massage function in a cash car. You know how like warning chimes and bongs in cars are really annoying? Well, Nissan got computer game maker Namco, which made stuff like Tekken and Ridge Racer, to do the warning bongs, and so they're actually quite pleasing. Have a listen to this. That's me doing two warning sounds. <laughs> one for having the door open with the car in drive, and then one when I lift off and put it into drive without my foot on the brake. It is like you're playing some kind of game, isn't it? You're going to be able to get an electric version of this cash car, which is perfect for people who like the sensation of driving the instant response you get from an electric motor, but they're all worried about like the charging infrastructure because what it'll actually have is a little 1.5 litre petrol engine on board, which will act as a generator to provide electricity for the electric motor. There will be a battery as well, but it'll only actually give you about two miles of range before that petrol generator sparks up to give you some power for the motors. That brings me on to the normal engines you can get with this car. So there's a 1.3 litre turbo petrol and you can either have it with 138 horsepower or 156 horsepower. You can get it with a manual gearbox or with an automatic gearbox on the higher power version. And the higher power version is also available with four wheel drive instead of the normal front wheel drive. Got it? Ah, actually, which one should you go for out of those cash cars? Well, what I'm gonna do is configure my favorite cash guy. There we go, configuring it now through CarWow, and I'm getting offers back from trusted dealers. If you wanna see which model I think you should get, the engine and the trim, which is my favorite, and the offers, click on the pop-out banner up there to go look now. Do it. You don't have to do it if you don't want to. You can stay with the rest of the review. I'm gonna drive this thing now. All right, let's do it. All right, let me just turn this off and on. Now. Working. Card lost the plot. Sound like gearbox fault and stuff. Classic. Reset. Turn it off and on again. Modern cars are basically computers, aren't they? Now I can take it for a drive. <laughs> Let's start off with what this car's like at low speed. So, yeah, it's easy. Steering is nice and light, very light actually. I've got the automatic gearbox, so I don't really have to worry about changing gears, it's good. Brakes, smooth, progressive, not grabby. Then there's the turning circle. It's 11.5 meters, which is pretty good. Just get out of here. I wonder if I can go two of us at once below the barrier. Will this end up badly? I don't know. No, it's we're fine. This is real world testing, people. Oh, yeah. Now I'm going to try and find some bumps in the road to check out the suspension. 20 inch alloy wheels, do they affect the ride quality? Is the car still comfortable? Actually, is it easy 
to manoeuvre. Oh, I thought they were going to hit my wing mirror. The uh, visibility is pretty good. I know the wing mirror, but that was a bit scary. And again, oh my God, here we go. These people are braver than me. Anyhow, yeah, the suspension is very, very good. Bit of a bump there and yeah, just dealt with it. Oh God, this guy's going quickly. Classic Mercedes driver. Oh, that's one thing I've just noticed. When you're getting slow and you put your foot down, you have to wait for a second until the engine picks up and then takes off, which is a bit annoying, I'd imagine, when you're pulling out at junctions. In terms of the performance, it's adequate, if not exactly rapid. Now, if you heard that beeping sound, that was the safety system, recognising that I was getting too close to the car in front then, it was going to auto brake if I didn't back off. Generally though, easy car to drive in town, this. Just, yeah, that throttle response could just do with being a bit better. And this is the more powerful engine as well. I think you're definitely going to need this more powerful engine if you want the best performance out of this car and you're definitely going to need it if you want the automatic gearbox because you can't get it with the less powerful engine and you're going to need it if you want to tow because the automatic has a higher towing limit it's 1.8 tons but then you also need the four-wheel drive oh gosh yeah nissan says they have tried to make this car a bit more sporty to drive than the previous cash i haven't really got ideal roads to test it but let's see what it goes around this roundabout like. Come on, people. So the steering, it just feels a little bit rubbery, a bit overly light. I can put the car into sports mode, adds a bit of weight, but it still feels artificial. At least the car doesn't lean that much, but fun? No, I don't see this as being a particularly fun car. I'd say that something like a Toyota CHR has the edge when it comes to a sporty drive over this. And if you want to see my full in-depth video review of that car, you can click on the pop-out button in the top right-hand corner of the screen to check it out. As for driving on faster roads, well, not much wind noise, but I'm noticing quite a bit of tyre noise, especially when driving on this rough surface here. The engine as well can be a little bit when you rev it. I don't know if you can hear that. <laughs> so not the most relaxing, but not terrible either. While we're at it, let's just check out the response of the gearbox and the engine. So there's a little gap here. I'm going to try and suddenly overtake. See if I can do it without getting flashed by this van driver. Yeah, just about. Oh, and once again, the warning signs are telling me off for getting too close to the car in front. Overall though, yeah, this is pretty decent to drive. I quite like it. It's relaxing. It's what you expect for a cash car, and it delivers. It's more relaxing than the last one, which is a good thing. So then, what's my final verdict on the new Nissan Qashqai? Should you avoid it? Should you consider it? Should you shortlist it? Or should you just go right ahead and buy it? Well, I reckon you should shortlist the Qashqai. It really is a good all-round family-friendly SUV. Plus the door mirrors are really big, so you can lean on them like this. It's good, I like that. If you enjoyed the video, why not give it a like? If you didn't, why are you even here? You should have clicked out ages ago, surely. Anyway, if you want to watch some more videos, click on those windows there. And if you'd like us to help you sell your car, click on that box there and you'll get offers back from it from our trusted dealers. There's no obligation to sell through us and it's completely free. So you might as well just try it out anyway.